Hi guys, it's Naomi. I have a rather uncomfortable topic to talk about. Um, it might make you guys feel a little bit uncomfortable, but um, I know that we've all been through this before. So um, Valentine's Day was not all that long ago. And my husband and I started out our morning um, doing grocery shopping because that's what we do on Saturday mornings. So it was kind of like um, a Valentine's date, but not a good one. <laughs> um, we went to like three different grocery stores, which is pretty typical because we don't like um, to get all of our stuff from one place. And um, I just sensed this really negative energy all morning long from my husband, Adrian. He um, Every time the cashier like would ask him, so do you guys have any big plans for today? You know, typical, you know, conversation. Um, ordinarily, you know, my husband and I would say, oh, we're just grocery shopping and, you know, doing schoolwork, whatever. But he almost always would say, oh, you know, just work, 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 work. That's my life. All I do is work. And, um... You can imagine how that probably made me feel. Um, I didn't feel good about that. I didn't want him working all of the time or feeling like he works all of the time. You know, while I'm sitting at home, I'm st I'm at home, but I'm still kind of, you know, working my butt off to, you know, grow my business and uh, improve myself and, you know, what have you, take care of the house. And so, you know, this really negative energy was taking place as the day went on and, we got into this huge argument in the car, and then it just got a little bit worse um, as we got home. It was, um, it just didn't really make me feel good at all. I, I really wanted to distance myself from him um, with all of the uh, pessimistic types of comments that were coming out of his mouth. I just felt like we were kind of growing apart, and you know, he needed to do his schoolwork, his work, work, work. And, you know, I wanted to do whatever else, you know, I want to do on my computer, like write an article or look at Facebook. And the energy was just terrible. And I was like, I can't, I can't do this. And he said, don't worry about it. You sit right here. You don't have to go anywhere. I'm going to go get ice cream. And I was like, whoa, wait a second. Ice cream? And he's like, that's what's going to make me happy. And I'm sure that you guys have probably felt that way before you turn to food when there's uncomfortable feelings going on and you don't feel um, love, you don't feel um, safety. So um, instead of him going and getting ice cream, you know, we had to sit down and really have this uncomfortable conversation about you know, what was really going on underneath all of the... Um, words that were coming out of his mouth, all of the feelings that he was feeling, you know, I had to listen to all of these things and kind of piece together what was really going on so that I could help him and so that I could help myself. And um, in between the talk of his schoolwork, you know, how everything about that was getting to him, people uh, imposing deadlines on him that were totally unrealistic, um, you know, how his grade was dropping in one class, how his teacher was a dumbass, you know, all of these things. And then about his real work, about how somebody else was offered a job that he wanted and he made clear that he wanted it, but yet it was offered to somebody else. Um, he was being demanded to come into work when on a Saturday morning when, you know, working overtime is not mandatory, but his supervisor made it seem like it was. And just all of these things to do with work, all of these stresses coming down on him. And what it boiled down to was that his the root cause of all of this was that he was really not living in the present moment. And, you know, he was living in his mind. He was... Um, he had all of these things going on in his mind, all of these stressors, but also I think one that, there was one big thing that stood out to me. And this is something that I you know, ask my health coaching clients to work on, but also it can 
if you work on it so much and try to make it so real in your mind, it can become a stressor. And that is, you know, knowing your reason why you want to do something, why you want to succeed at something. So for instance, with my husband, that was he wanted to do well at work. He wanted to do well in school so that we could advance our lives and grow. And, you know, between him and I growing our businesses, we want to ideally live in Hawaii because we love warm weather. And when it's the winter months, when it's you know, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, or below, and snow, you don't want to be in that area, or at least we don't want to. We're not those types of people. So he has it in his mind. He knows his why he wants to achieve all of these things and earn his degree and go on to build a business because he doesn't want to live in Spokane anymore. He wants to live in Hawaii where, you know, he can go out and surf and bodyboard every day if he wants to. And this is something that, like I said, I work with my clients on. I want you to know your why and make it an emotional thing. It's something that will drive you to become more successful at your goals. But at the same time, if it's actually you're striving so hard that it becomes like you're feeling like crap because of it, because you're living in the future, then you have to check yourself. For Adrian, my husband, he was living in the future. He had his mind in Hawaii and wondered why the hell we weren't there yet. And he was pissed off and angry. You know, why is it I still have to go to school and, you know, put up with these dumbasses? You know, why is it that I still have to go to work every single day and work my ass off in the cold and, you know, deal with these people that don't understand me? You know, why? why? Why can't I be in Hawaii already? Instead of focusing on the fact that he has so much that he should be thankful and grateful for right now. You know, I broke it down to him to the bare minimums. If you know, you know, Maslow's Pyramid of Needs, it's like we need safety, security, love, acceptance. You know, all of these basic needs, survival needs. And I broke it down for them. So we have this wonderful house that we own that, you know, keeps us warm, keeps us safe, that we really enjoy our home. We have plenty of food in our bellies. We don't lack for any. We have two wonderful little dogs sitting around here somewhere that bring us so much joy and love, you know, because we don't have babies of our own. You know, we have wonderful families. We actually have really decent jobs and um, we have the ability to learn and grow. We have great friends. We have a great community. You know, there's so much to be thankful for and I think that made a light bulb kind of click in his mind that said, okay, yeah, I am living in Hawaii right now. Um, it doesn't mean that you have to give up on your dream and stop thinking about it. But when it gets to the point that you're thinking about it more often than you are thinking about your present moment and actually enjoying what you're doing, enjoying the people that you're around, how you can bring value to them instead of me, 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 then that's a problem. And so, you know, after we had that conversation, it was all smooth sailing from there. You know, it was all good. And we woke up this morning and I um, showed him some video that really inspired me. And he's like, oh man, you know, he was really inspired by it too. And so he gets on his computer, he gets his laptop out. And the very first thing that pops up was Hawaii Rentals. <laughs> and it was like, okay, I thought we had this discussion already. And he was really embarrassed. He said, oh, no, I'm addicted. You know, I, maybe I need to go talk to the pastor about this problem. You know, and then we were went into how he was possessed by the Hawaii demons and <laughs> all that good stuff. But I just wanted to throw that out there for you guys because I know that some of you are either struggling with coming up with enough reasons why you want to achieve your goals or the fact that, you know, maybe um, you're struggling with being present 
because it feels like the moment that you're in right now is really, really hard. And you have to ask yourself, is it really, really hard because you're focusing only on yourself and you know where you want to be? Like, do I want to be that 110 pound woman and I want to be on the beaches of Hawaii wearing my bikinis, sipping my ties? Or am I grateful for the beautiful, wonderful person I am right now and the wonderful environment that I'm already in? When you focus on gratitude and serving others, those beautiful, wonderful things will come to you. So, um, I guess that's all I have to say. You know, I don't, I, this wasn't a script or anything like that. And, um, I just want you guys to think about that today. All right. Take care. Bye.